inequalities is just like graphing an equation, except you have to determine whether or not the uh, boundary line is going to be solid or dotted. So that's one of the first things you want to kind of think about because <coughs> that's most often what people forget to do. They'll graph it correctly, but they forget to dot it when it needs to be dotted. And how do we know when it needs to be solid or dotted? If it's an equal to, it's going to be solid. And if it's not an equal to, it will be dotted. Then, of course, after we graph that boundary line, solid or dotted, we have to figure out what side to shade. That's the other difference when we're graphing inequalities, is that it's not going to be just a line. We get to shade as well. So we will pick a random point. We can pick any point you want as long as it's not on the line. And then we'll test it in the original equation. And if it comes out true, we shade the side that the point is on. And if it comes out false, then we shade the opposite side of the line. So we have 2x minus y is greater than 8. We know that it's going to have to be, what kind of line? Dotted. Okay, so just, you might want to make a note to yourself or just to remember. I'm, it's not that you don't know that a when the equal sign is there that it is dotted. I, I bet I could ask every single person and you're going to know that it's dotted and it's just you forget. So make a note so that you don't forget to do that. Okay. Now, this is in what form that we talked about the other day? Standard. Standard. So when you solve it, think about it or when we're going to find the point as if it was just a standard equation. 2x minus y equals 8. What did we do the other day? Anytime we have a equation in standard form, how do we go about graphing that? Does your number? Exactly. We need to find the zeros. So we put a zero in for x, find y, put a zero in for y, find x. What we're really doing there is finding our intercepts. You're finding your x-intercept and your y-intercept. So if you put a 0 in for x, what is your y value going to be? Negative 8. So that's our y-intercept. And when you put a 0 in for y, you get 4, and that's our x-intercept. All right, so we will graph those two points. 4, 0, and negative 8, 0. And then we freehand, we connect them. No! It's not allowed. What do we do to connect them? Straight edge. You guys are just going to let me see. That black screen, not intercepts on there and we dot our line and then we need to test a point. Any particular point anyone would like to test? Zero, zero. That is my favorite as well. So if we're going to test zero, zero, 
You can use that one every time as long as your line doesn't go through zero, zero. We'll do two times zero minus zero is greater than eight. Well, two times zero minus zero simplifies to zero. Is zero greater than eight? Since zero, zero is on the left side, but it made our statement fall, <coughs> where do we shade? To the right. To the right. All right, we'll be in the next one. different than the first one. It doesn't have a Y. So what kind of line do we have going on here? It's going to be a vertical line. And I would recommend getting your X by itself first. So dividing both sides by negative 3 so that we can figure out what kind of vertical line it's going to be. Now when we divide both sides by negative 3, what happens? <coughs> Let's see. You flip the sign. Some of you forgot that on your quiz, which we'll take a look at later. So 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. Alright, so how do we graph this? Well, it's quite a bit different than the last one. We have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Vertical line of negative 3, solid or dotted? solid line at negative 3, and then, can you test a point on these? Sure, you could. You could still put 0 in. If I wanted to test 0, I mean, they're a little bit more obvious, but zero, is 0 greater than or equal to negative 3? Yeah. So which way are we shading? Now, what does all this mean? All this shaded area. Yes, any point that falls in that shaded area, if we were to put it into our equation, it would be true. Okay, so that shaded area represents all the possible solutions. Does anybody have any questions on graphing inequalities, shading inequalities? Would you like to do more examples? Okay. All right. Well, that was fun. Thanks for watching.